Hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to continue my, my lecture uh, on digital and printer design. So I am going to make the video smaller and I will divide the design procedure in several continuity ways. So, so first I start with what we have discussed in our previous uh, video lectures that for IIR filter, uh, the transfer function, the digital IIR filter transfer function is HZ and we know that it is uh, the, uh, for a realizable filter, you know, for a realizable any system, uh, the um, two conditions are there. First is it must be causal, that means HN equal to 0 for n less than equal to 0. So this is for the causal condition and for stability it must satisfy that the summation of these impulse responses must be less than infinity. That means it must be converted. So the first thing for a filter to be realizable, for a causal filter to be realizable, we should mention that two conditions must be satisfied. One is you all know that for a causal system we can write Hn equal to 0 for n less than equal to 0. This is called causal and the stability condition is summation of Hn, summation of mod of Hn must be less than infinity for n is ranging from 0 to infinity. So this is the, uh, that means the impulse response must be summed. Okay. Now, then another thing, this uh, impact from the impulse response, we have also uh, derived the, we have mentioned how we can get the uh, transfer function in this form. Now, what, what, how we realize a big filter? Actually, the design of an IIR filter for any given specification is basically finding this BK and AK, this coefficient, that is the coefficients associated with the uh, zeros and poles of the IIR system. So, we have to find BK and AK. Now, IIR filter design, how we generally do is first we get the specification. We have discussed about how we get a specification of locus filter. We also mentioned that that we are going to uh, know here the uh, locus filter design. Okay, the locus filter design because the locus filter can be modified to any type of filters. That's why we are going to learn here locus filter design. Next is the IIR filter design method, I have told you that FIR doesn't have a very analytical, it is quasi analytical or semi analytical optimized methods are available. But in IIR filter design, we got uh, several uh, very good uh, analog filter design methodology like Butterworth, Chebyshev of electric filters, and we actually do. In the virtue of analog filter design, we go for digital filter design. For that, what we do, the this transfer function, it, it, uh, we used to convert it into form of continuous form transfer function, HAS. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, first, we got the specification. Uh, we got the specification in the digital domain. Okay, we got the specification in digital domain and from the digital specification, we get the analog specification first. From digital specifications, we get the analog specifications first. Okay, analog specification. And from these analog specifications, these are now, uh, we, we, uh, we have different analog filter design methods that is uh, Chebyshev, that is Butterworth. Um, depending upon the usage, we can choose our filter and suppose we are using Butterworth filter and we take the Butterworth filter for uh, that specific
specific and should we are, we are going to design the whatever filter to make that specification okay now when the uh, specifications are made what means to we got the transfer function we got the order of the system or the order of the code so we got the transfer function has now this has this has now will be converted to hz and from hz we are going to realize the filter finding ak bk we are going to make the filter structure in this way digital filter design happens okay uh, a digital iir filter design happens by virtue of analog filter now few things i want to mention that uh, we know that generally three filters butterworth chebyshev and electric filters are uh, very much popular for this design aspects now what uh, uh, though the you, your curriculum the butterworth is only present but i just want to mention few things first first i was at yt yt of okay the characteristic of if we think of butterworth filter the butterworth filter is having a characteristic it is called maximally flat maximally flat filter response it is having maximally flat filter response at origin uh, this is its uh, what its importance that it is having a maximally flat uh, response at origin that means uh, it doesn't have any ripple it's like the response uh, suppose this is the 0 db response that is uh, 0 db and we know this is our uh, um, i mean ideal filter and uh, in butterworth filter this point is called this is 3 db and it this is the pass band a flat pass band almost like this a flat pass band in case of butterworth filter there is no ripple in the butterworth filter and from here suppose the stop band starts whereas if you go for che by che filter if you go for che by che filter uh, you will find that there is ripple in either pass band or stop band you will find that there is ripple in either pass band or stop band but but the filter is the response of the filter of che by che is much steeper than that of the butterworth that means that means the transition band what we have discussed the transition band in the butterworth filter is more than that of the che by che filter okay the electric filter is very much steeper but uh, it is in it is giving it is giving us the optimum response but it requires numerical computation in almost every cases that's why design engineers generally use Uh, either butterworth or che by che okay so here uh this is the uh, another another thing i would like to mention that uh, you will uh, know understand afterwards that the poles of the butterworth filter it lies on a circle whereas the uh, butterworth uh, the poles of the um, elliptic uh, sorry uh, che by che filter lies on a ellipse so for the same specification uh, the number of poles in butterworth are more with compared to che by che because you understand for a same specification this is giving you a much uh, steeper and we know if we, we want to make the butterworth filter that much of steeper we need to increase the order 
definitely we have to increase the order as we have discussed previously so uh, depending upon depending upon our usage uh, if we need a very good pass band a very flat pass band we have to uh, pass the frequencies without any distortion we need to use but whereas uh, if the re requirement is a different a steeper a less lesser transient band or this type of thing we, we should go for tribalsha filter so now in our consecutive uh, lecture we are going to discuss how we can uh, get the, how we are going to discuss how we are going to uh, design the butterworth filter thank you